Hello? Sorry, just quickly, what's your title? It's just a company name in the subject. Uh, company name, then just put dash illegal action. Okay, right, mate. Cheers. Phones don't stop all day, Will. This is how it is every day. Jamie O'Hara about a player. This is why we need to be full time, you see. Then we haven't got this hassle. I think I'll just be a football manager for a season instead of doing everything. Right, you've got me as long as you need me, mate. I've got everybody out of the way. Where are we going here? Yeah, just there. Right. Right, isn't it? Here now. Right, if you're going to win these things, you've got to earn them, boys. If we've got to spend more money applying for planning and stuff like that, you know, the budget's gone, we've got no money. Me and my friends, we just said, let's just start playing football on a Saturday, um, as opposed to travelling around watching games, and um, that's where it started, really. We rented a council pitch for 50 quid, and um, we used to have to drag the nets across it. And, uh, you know, same old thing, people would turn up late so they didn't have to do it, and other people stood there on stalls with the nets blowing in the wind, and, you know, standard park football stuff. We started in Division 5 of the Crawleyan District Football League. We played one season in that league and um, we then transferred across to the West Sussex Football League and it had essentially four divisions and a Premier League and that was before you even went into intermediate football, you know, which has three divisions and that's before you go into county league football. This club's got the most promotions in British football history. If we had the same number of promotions in the next 10 years as we had in the last 10 years, we'd be in the Premier League. That's a fact and that was the sort of journey within that time. But you could not play a lower level of football um, if you tried. I don't know if you like this is a, a Dorkin, it's a cockerel. That's what it is. It's a, it's a breed of cockerel. And it's, it's like got five toes. That's, the, that's what it is. And now it's, a, it's a, they used to be bred in England, like the most expensive cockerel. And now they're in America. And they're big in America. It's, that's, that's what a Dorkin is. So that's why it's the badge. Once you get five, six promotions in, we then had to, you know, rope off the pitch. That was the first ever thing we had to do. We had to rope off the pitch and we had to raise the money for that rope. This is at the council pitch. So there was restrictions galore on doing anything more with it. So we then had to find a different venue. The site that really it kind of remains really a bit of our spiritual home, if you like, a place called West Humble, bottom of Box Hill. Um, and it was just a, a field. It was just a field and nothing there at all. No power, no water, nothing, nothing. And that summer we, we, we built up the, the changing rooms uh, within the team, the club, the girlfriends, the, you know, the dads, the mums. And then we got what is known as West Humble to the level we needed it to, to kick a ball for that season. This is what West Humble was most famous for, probably mud. <laughs> he, he's still, for, he, he, this is James McShane, he still plays for us now and um, um, you know, West Dumble was a quagmire at times. These things you learn as you go along, but you can't count flat standing as capacity. And this sounds, once someone tells you about it, it's the most obvious thing in the world, but you can only count a metre and a half. So in order to stay in the lead, we've got to get it up to uh, kind of basically three to four thousand. Um, so the whole of this end, this is going to be 300 seats here uh, and then the remainder is a, a big 11 tier kind of terrace. I mean, it literally starts now. We've got, how many weeks? We've got six weeks. Six weeks to, to get it in. It's straightforward, really, to a degree, he says. And yeah, then it's going to look much more like a football ground, which is brilliant. In my kind of career, if you like, um, you know, a very early age, done really well for myself in the city and, um, you know, on a leadership basis, I was running I was the UK's youngest sales director for a big blue chip company at just 24, 25 years old. So I'd had a massive amount of leadership training um, as well. And on top of that, I'm an absolute football nut. I must have put over two, three million pounds into, in, in, into this club um, in the course of that much time. Um, 
I've given, I've invested every single thing I've got physically, uh, financially. I think driving a hard bargain is important. I think making sure people understand the culture here is this is the club that wins. I'm not doing it for money, that's for sure, because this costs me money. There's, there's, there is no salary. Right, listen up then. The objective is six points, two games. If we get six points in these two games, then you know we will be in the mix, firmly in the mix. And let me tell you, in all the time I've been doing this, if you're in the mix, when it goes to one game a week, you won't come out of the mix. We'll stay there. So it's a very important couple of games to make sure we win them. Minimum target, four points. Ideally six, that's the plan. If we get that, minimum or max, we're in the mix. One game a week, we'll stay there. Let's have a great session though, yeah? For us, it's about football in Dorking. I came to my first game here with my granddad at about five years old. Um, when the old Dorking played Cray Wanderers, and I remember getting the programme and reading it back to front like you do 20 times. Um, when I drive through the high street on a match day and then I see the, uh, the kids in their <laughs> Wanderers shirts with their dads, to me, that is me, all those years ago with my granddad, and that, that's, that's, that's how it starts. Jimmy and Briggsy, you are high wingers that obviously do your backwards bit when you need to. That's going to benefit us going forward. Jack, their overload is there. My friends always say to me, well, you know, you're going to be passionate. You're going to get more sort of disciplined situations than the average person because you're the biggest supporter out there. You have to be because you started from scratch and, and that's how it is. But um, I'm, I'm kind of firm but fair, but people know where they stand with me. You wouldn't really hear a complaint from a player. Listen, listen to me. If you're going to win these things, you've got to earn them, boys. There ain't nobody going to go and give you this today. We've got to work our b****s off and when you're f***ed, somebody else will come on. Right, boys, we go out, we get the new shape of sort, we get high up the f***ing pitch. We press this mob, and that's what we do. All right, boys, let's go. It's such a unique story because it, it genuinely is the case that we've created something for nothing, and now we've got you know kids, dads, families, all genres following the club week in, week out. So our reward. It is that, that's our reward. Well, but listen, we've got the wrong we've got the wrong players in the wrong positions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Niall needs to come inside. Yeah. We need a player that can hold yeah, it up front. Legs as well, yeah. yeah, we need we need we need legs in the middle. We're not gonna win we're not gonna come out of the game. They're gonna overrun us all day long. Well life changing really uh, for me. It's just defined everything I stand for. I'm, I'm known as the football guy. Um, but um, we have to look at life, you know, without Mark White because we want Dorking Wanderers to be a club that's there forevermore. And on the field, I think we'd love to become a sustainable National League club. Um, you know, we've already done fantastic. So I, th I just think really just, you know, just continue growth really and just keep, keep believing, just keeping the principles that you built the club on.